Hello guys, Winston here. Over the past few months, I've noticed that my videos have been an incredible educational resource. For me. The feedback and advice you guys give is awesome and I really appreciate how supportive the community has been. I almost always learn something new from the suggestions you guys leave in the comments. One project I really wanted to revisit was the signs that I made in Pine a few weeks ago. There were a lot of small things I would have liked to do differently in hindsight. For example, when I painted my plaques, I didn't expect there to be so much paint bleeding through the grain of the wood. I'd previously made a sign out of hardwood and used the same paint and sand technique without any major issues, so when I switched to pine I was unprepared for the less precise and messier results. Some of you suggested sealing the top layer of wood first before cutting, so that's what I tested this time. I have a piece of pine sprayed with a single coat of lacquer on one side, while the back was lacquer free. I carved the same test pattern on both sides and applied a generous coat of bright red paint. After sanding, this is the result. Unsurprisingly, having a non-absorbent layer on top of the wood stops the majority of the bleed through. It's still not 100% effective since some paint can seep through the grain laterally from the faces exposed in the pocketing operation, but for all practical purposes, my problems with paint are solved. Some of you have asked before what I use to hold 8th inch end mills in my router since both the Makita and the DeWalt come with only quarter inch collets, and my answer has always been a reduction bushing. This is a cheap and router agnostic solution for tool holding, but I always wondered whether or not it was the best option. I generally don't care about precision in the thousandths, but I thought it would be interesting to know if there was a measurable difference in runout between using a bushing versus a custom third party collet. Thanks to the support from my handful of patrons, I decided to purchase both an 8th inch DeWalt and Makita collet from Allaire. You guys make it so that I don't have to think twice about undertaking experiments like this, so thank you. Shameless Patreon plug aside, here's how my testing went down. First, I'd measure the runout of each of the stock quarter inch collets in my DeWalt and Makita routers. Then I'd swap out for the 8th inch Allaire collets, and lastly I'd try using the reduction bushing in a stock quarter inch collet. Using some long reach end mills since I lack precision ground pins of the correct diameter, I'd be measuring runout 1 inch below the spindle nut against the end mills shanks. And just because I could, I decided to also measure the runout of my DC quiet cut spindle and the Nomad spindle. It should be noted that I'm assuming that my end mills are very close to dead straight, and my sample size is one collet of each type, so take these results with a grain of salt. My results are as follows. The Makita router with a stock quarter inch collet has a radial deviation of 1.2 thousandths of an inch, which means that in a pocketing operation you could see a theoretical error magnitude of about 2.5 thou. Switching to Allaire's 8th inch collet, I recorded a deviation of 1.5 thou. That's basically within the noise of my measurements since I'm using an analog dial indicator. A bit of dust packed against the conical bearing surface of the collet would cause just as much runout. In my mind, it's basically as good as the stock collet that you get from Makita. Switching back to the quarter inch collet, I tried using it with my reduction bushing for 8th inch end mills and found that the runout was plus or minus 1.2 thou. No difference at all compared to using a native quarter inch shank end mill. Again, keep in mind that my sample size is a single bushing, but this is promising for those of you who favor the cheaper option. With my DeWalt stock collet, I measured 2.7 thou of radial deviation. With Allaire's replacement collet for the DeWalt, I measured 2.3 thou. At this point, I'm not sure if the runout is due to the collet or inherent in the router's construction, but since I know Allaire is capable of making collets to tighter tolerances, I'm leaning towards the latter explanation. Moving on to my underpowered quiet cut spindle and its glorious ER11 collet system, I measured basically plus or minus 1 thou or less of runout with both the quarter inch and eighth inch collets. Not bad for an import part. And last but not least was the Nomad. Runout was a half thou with a quarter inch ER11 collet, and maybe a quarter thou, if that, using the eighth inch collet. This is the same pattern I saw in the quiet cut, so I'm going to say that my quarter inch collet is out of alignment by about 0.2 thou. Regardless, this was a really impressive result in my opinion. To me, it shows that the Carbide 3D team went out of their way to engineer a very high precision machine. For Shapeoko users, what does this mean? Well, for starters, the third party collet option for either router is definitely viable. If you find a quality vendor, your spindle runout should basically be unaffected. If you want to use a reduction bushing for holding 8th inch end mills, that shouldn't be a problem either. But personally, I've noticed inconsistencies with my bushing that'll push me towards using the collets. The inner diameter of my bushing is more undersized than oversized, and a lot of my end mills are difficult to insert. Collets have a wider expansion and compression range, so I've never had any issues with my end mills getting stuck. Moving on, with a lot of fibrous materials like pine and MDF, I've noticed that the edges of my cuts can end up pretty fuzzy. 
A common suggestion to get around this and save time in post CNC cleanup is to use a down cutting end mill. These are cutters that have reversed helical flutes with cutting edges that push material down instead of pulling up. The idea is that you'll always be pressing wood against something that provides resistance. So instead of flopping around above the surface of your stock, wood fibers will be cleanly sheared. I purchased a couple cutters off eBay to test against my existing end mill inventory. I would run an identical pocketing job with both an up cut and a down cut end mill and then compare the results. In testing, the down cut end mill showed generally cleaner edges. In materials that are more prone to splintering like cheap plywood or highly fibrous materials like MDF, you'll see the greatest benefit. Large thin sheets of stock also benefit from using down cut end mills because you're pressing the material against your table. Conventional end mills can pull material towards the cutter causing unintentionally deep cuts. One thing to keep in mind when using downcut end mills, however, is that they don't do a good job of clearing chips from deep pockets. Use caution when cutting at a depth of more than about two times the diameter of your end mill. So putting all of these findings together, I made a new pine plaque and was much happier with the results. The pockets required less cleanup, end mill changes were faster, and the paint went on cleaner without bleeding through the grain. This one's going to my friend Matt, who everyone knows as the Panda because of his calculated clumsiness, ambitious appetite, and general laziness. And that's all I have for this week. I want to thank you all very much for watching. I want to thank my Patreon supporters for keeping my operation out of the red, and I'll be back in a week or two, or three, with more CNC-related content.